welcome dear students let's move on to the next topics of our chapter microorganisms friends and foes so far we have seen what are microorganisms what are their different categories and we have learned about all the five types or the five categories of these microorganisms but in this part we are going to see what is the history of the discovery of these microorganisms who was the first person who has discovered or who has seen these microorganisms and we'll also see what are the conditions which facilitate the growth of these microbes and at last we'll see and perform an activity through which we will observe bread mold a type of microorganism Antony von Leeuwenhoek he was a dutch man and he has for the first time observed microorganisms with the help of his newly invented microscope he was one of the first people to observe microorganisms using a microscope of his own design and made one of the most important contributions to biology before his discovery of microorganisms it had been a mystery why grapes could be turned into wine how milk can be converted into cheese or why food would spoil antony von leeuwenhoek did not make connection between these processes and microorganisms but using a microscope he did establish that there were forms of life that were not visible to the naked eye he confirmed the presence of these microorganisms which can't be seen through our naked eyes but we need a microscope to see these microbes after his discovery came louis pasteur he was a french man and he discovered that microorganisms in the air spoil food he concluded that they are the cause of fermentation and decay and he also said that these are the main cause of diseases then came robert koch he was a german and he designed techniques for handling bacteria that are used these days also he studied the disease anthrax in cattle and he proved that it was caused by specific microorganisms that spread the disease from infected animals to other healthy animals and after his discovery came joseph lister he was an english man and was a famous surgeon he was for the first time able to eliminate bacteria from the operation theater by using carbolic acid which is a disinfectant and this greatly improved the chances of a patient surviving an operation let us see what are the conditions which facilitate the growth of these microbes we have already seen that these microbes are present everywhere and they can survive in all the types of habitats they can survive the extreme conditions also so the first condition for the growth of these microbes is the presence of oxygen many microorganisms need oxygen for respiration but there are some microorganisms like yeast and uh, tetanus causing bacterium uh, they do not require oxygen for respiration so we can say that these microorganisms may be aerobic and they can be anaerobic also why we are saying like this because there are some microorganisms which need oxygen for respiration but there are some which do not require oxygen at all and they are called anaerobic microbes then the second condition is 
the presence of water and we know that microbes love to live in damp humid areas so moisture is essential for the growth of most of these microorganisms then comes the third condition which is suitable temperature we know that these microbes can survive in extreme conditions they can tolerate and grow at extreme temperatures of minus 10 degree celsius or above 100 degree celsius but in general if we talk in general these microorganisms can survive in a better way in a temperature range between 25 degree celsius to 38 degree celsius this is the best suitable temperature for these microbes to grow and survive the next condition is dark places many microorganisms live in dark places direct sunlight often kills them however there are some microbes which are photosynthetic and these microbes need light for their process of photosynthesis and to synthesize their food but most of them love to live in dark damp places because the sunlight kills them the next condition is suitable food supply microorganisms live and feed on a wide range of materials some of them are saprophytes and some of them are parasites so saprophytes like most of the fungi and some of the bacteria and they are responsible for the decay and decomposition of the dead organisms also and bacteria fungi and protozoa some of them are parasites also and they obtain their food from the host the living organism in which they are present they obtain their nutrition from the tissues of their host organisms while there are some bacteria protozoa and algae who are capable of performing photosynthesis it means they can synthesize their food by their own so in general we can say that they all these microorganisms or all these microbes need a suitable food supply it depends which type of microbe they are they can be parasitic saprophytic or they can perform photosynthesis to synthesize their food by their own let us perform a very simple activity to observe the bread mold which is a type of microbe for this activity we need slices of bread and some water what is done is first we have to moisten a slice of bread with water and we have to take another bread slice and we have to toast it we have to roast it in a dry manner so that it is free of moisture and we have to keep both the bread slices in a warm dark place for a week and we have to observe the changes in both the bread slices after a week so let's see what we will observe after a week we we'll see that the slice of moistened bread will have some growth on it as you can see from the picture also some growth is there on the moistened bread slice this is bread mold the spores of the mold are everywhere they are present in the air and they are microscopic and therefore we cannot see them through our naked eyes they cause the growth of mold on food items and we have learned that these microbes love to live in the damp moist places so mold showed its growth on the moistened bread slices but when we look at the roasted bread slice 
we will find that the mold has not shown any growth on it why because we have made it dry we have roasted it so this is because the mold lives in moist and warm conditions whereas the toast is dry therefore it has not shown the growth of the mold toasting kills the spores also and therefore it has not shown the growth of mold whereas the mold has been grown on the moistened bread slices so in this way it also proves that these microbes grow very easily in the moist and damp food items also thus in this part we have seen what is the history of the microorganisms how they were discovered and through an activity we have also seen the growth of a bread mold thank you